greet everybody today in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for me as I pray for you. I, I, I thank God for all the ministers in the house. Amen. Amen. God bless each and every one in their own capacity of faith. Amen. The Bible said faith without works is yeah. dead. Amen. We're not into the dead works. and <laughs> Never was into it or not into it. Amen. So Amen. we thank God. Um, we read earlier from Romans 8, 9, and 10. And the Bible said that the Spirit of Christ is not in you. Come on, somebody. Church, where are you? Yes. If the Spirit of Christ is not in you, you are what? None of His. And so the message today, I hope it wake up some folks that are really acting like they belong to Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm. So there's going to be a lot of people that's going to be ashamed. A lot of church is. It's going to be ashamed because they are bragging on themselves on how mighty, how powerful, how great they speakers are, how great they apostle is, how great they bishop is. And, and they don't never brag on Jesus. Amen? Amen. <laughs> they brag on man. And never brag on the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. So it's about the spirit. Because Paul says put no confidence in what? Amen. In the flesh. So let's turn uh, to the book of Luke. Chapter 24. Are you there? The book of Luke. Chapter 24. And as I go through this message. I know some of y'all is going to start thinking this is an Easter message. But it's not an Easter message because Easter's over and the eggs hunting season is finished. Amen. The eggs don't got too expensive now, so we may have to grow some eggs at home. Amen. But glory to God. Uh, and and it, it, it this description really means the resurrection, because Jesus said, "I am the resurrection and what and the life." Now it says, it starts off by saying, now upon the first day of what? The week. the week. Very early in the morning they came unto whom? The grave. Some of your Bibles, it says, sepulcher means grave. Bringing the spices which they have prepared and certain others with them. Verse 2. And they found the stone rolled away from what? The grave. Come on somebody. And they entered in and found out the body of the Lord Jesus. And you will understand in a minute where I'm really saying you're going to enter in the church and will not find the spirit of the of Christ. They, they are serving the body, but they don't have the spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. But listen to what I'm saying. Verse 4. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed. There about behold two men stood by them in Shining garments. Mm -hmm. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Mm -hmm. My message today is called, He Doesn't Live Here Anymore. All right. <laughs> All right. Whenever you find a church full of amusement that looks like an amusement park, He doesn't live there anymore mm. if it's all about the lights come on somebody it if it's all about the the nice uh stereo system come on mm. if it's all about the bootlegging preaching come on somebody the, that the gospel has been sold and bought then he doesn't live here anymore, anymore. amen mm. people are coming to the church mm. and they're looking for a body but they don't find they're looking for a body, but they need to be looking for the spirit. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says where the spirit is, there is life. Mm -hmm. The body represents death. Amen? That's why when they said, why come looking for the living amongst the dead? A lot of us are going to churches that are what? Dead. Dead works. Dead preachers. Dead people. Come on, somebody. Have you not been to some church where it sound like everybody is on the music realm, everybody's on the prophetic realm, everybody's on the apostolic realm, but you don't feel the presence of God in the house. You feel the presence of an amusement park. You feel the presence of, 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 of like you at Apollo at the showtime at Apollo. Come on, it ain't no difference in the church no more. 
can I tell the truth? We, I'm tired of going to church looking for the living and then I find that I'm amongst what? The graveyard. Can I tell the truth? This is a good one today. He doesn't live here anymore. Amen? We keep on looking for a man in a suit, but the man in the suit, the suit need to have a spirit that's performing in the man. It's either going to be the Holy Spirit or it's going to be the spirit of the Antichrist. And we don't know how to discern the difference. So when he puts on his robe yeah. and he puts on his the big cross and he starts speaking in Hebrew or translating into into Arabic we start to say well he's a man of God because the Bible simply said these all the disciples that were with Jesus the Bible called them men that were not smart come on they were not scholars in the word they were not they didn't never went to no Bible college or never had good education at all so those are the same people that Jesus are looking for now because those are spirit-filled men. In the book of Acts, they said, uh, Paul and said, find seven men filled with what? With the spirit. spirit. You don't find nobody want to find no spirit-filled people to run the church no more. They want some dead man walking. Come on, somebody. I don't see uh, that they had a funeral of some rapper and they put it on Facebook the boy is dead and they got him standing yeah. in the in in yeah. the, I guess they put got him in the club and he's standing there he chilling and while everybody else is partying around him and they having a, a witchcraft celebration this is what the church has become the same place we got a dead man up there, and we celebrating that bishop. We celebrating that uh, that apostle. We celebrating that elder. We celebrating that overseer. But that man, our woman, never says nothing about the Lord. They keep on telling you about their story, but they never tell you about his story. Come on, somebody. He doesn't live here anymore. That's what the Lord is telling me that he doesn't live in the building anymore. Because if he's not living in you, if he's not abiding in you, then there is nothing coming out of you that represents him. So you could come into the big building, you could come into the fancy church, you could dance all night, you could put on all the performance all you want, but he still doesn't live here anymore. He's moved on to another direction amen that's why the scripture said if any man have not the spirit of christ in him that is any man with title any woman with title doesn't mean because they have a title mean that they have the spirit saul was king and he walked with the prophets come on everybody know the story saul prophesied for a minute with the prophet and what Saul went back to his old self trying to kill David mm. so if that's the spirit of Christ in him then he wouldn't be wanting to kill David mm. so the spirit of God could let you do something and when it leave, when the spirit of God leaves you then who enters who enters that body then because two masters cannot live in the same temple you can't serve both of them. So we saw that with Saul, that for a moment God graced him. Come on. God loves us, and he graced Saul to allow him to be amongst the company of the prophet. Then everybody said, is Saul a prophet? No. It was a moment of transition. But you have to stay on the anointing. Not under the building or in the building. And some people feel like, oh, when I come to church, I feel good. You're supposed to feel good before you That's get right. to church. That's right. That's right. I think the government is going to make a, a feel good pill later. Everybody feel good. 
Amen? If you got the Holy Ghost, you should what? Feel good. My God. Because you are alive. Amen? I ain't talking about... Uh, uh, because the scripture said God may give us a quickening what spirit. It didn't say nothing about no quickening flesh. A quickening spirit. That's what I want. Roll back to Luke. Go back a few pages and look at Luke 20. We are 23. Go back with me to Luke 20. I hope y'all enjoying this message. Don't get mad at me because he don't live at your house no more. Luke what? Luke 20. Don't get mad at me because Jesus moved out. Amen? You kicked him out. You charged Jesus rent. Well, I got a word for you, man of God. And 15, I see $1,500 in your pocket. That's charging Jesus rent. <laughs> Amen? For the Holy Ghost to speak to me the Holy Ghost requires a payment plan come on somebody this ain't rent a center <laughs> I could rent the Holy Ghost for five minutes and then I go back when I get out of church I guess what I pull out of my pocket some Marlboros I just start busting start smoking and that's what you see with some of the prophets that be prophesying some of them might just be in the room somewhere uh, snorting cocaine and come right out and prophesy by another spirit. He don't live there no more. The gifts come without repentance. And I'm trying to tell church folks, wake up and stop sleeping. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 20 verse 37 and 38 Are you there with me? Amen. I'm preaching good today. The Bible says now that the dead are raised, 37, even Moses showed at the bush when he called it the Lord, the God of what? Abraham, the God of what? And the God of what? Jacob. For he is not the God of what? But the God of what? Amen? So he's the God of the living. So if he's a living God, then we should do have a living spirit in the house. A living spirit in you. A living spirit don't make you be oppressed and depressed all the time. A spirit of life don't make you cry and, 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 and break down because that's a spirit of death. Amen. That's a spirit of life and liberty breaks the spirit of bondage. The spirit of bondage keep you in a place of a moping. When Moses died, they keep on crying for all this time. The Lord said, stop crying. Get over that. Because I'm the God of the living. He first said, Moses is dead. He didn't say Moses is asleep. He said that about who? What was it? He went to Lazarus. He never said Lazarus was dead. He said he'll sleep. He said, but I go to what? Wake him up. Now, some of us is saved, but still what? Asleep. Amen? One thing I've studied about airplanes, and I, and I don't like him, because you could either fly it on autopilot, or you could fly it yourself. Amen? But some of us trust being the pilot of this body. I don't trust this body. So I don't want to put it on autopilot. I'd rather him fly this body. Amen? Amen. So we trust the church has put themselves on autopilot and hopefully that it's going to get to that destination. But what about with the turbulence that come? Come on. You're dealing with uh, birds that took down one bird going to the engine and take down the airplane. It's, I'm, I'm talking to your spirit man. Things get into your spirit man and could pull it down. Come on, somebody. 
things could get into your mind and pull you down just like a, an airplane, just yeah. be smooth flying, yeah. and next thing they start yeah. going through a storm, and next thing the plane them crash. That's right. yeah. Because they, the pilots trust the plane. Oh, this plane is in good condition. It's, it, 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 it's, it's known. It's a, it's a Boeing 707. So we as Christians trust our gifts and our mindset then we trust whom? The living God. Can I get amen? This is not your everyday message. But he's the God of what? Not the God of the dead. You ever come to church, sometimes you hear the choir singing and it sounds like they at a funeral. Amen? Especially in the Caribbean, they love singing stuff that sounds like somebody is being buried. No, I don't want to be around dead. I want to be around living stuff. You know, sometimes, especially church folks, they get dressed up real quick. Somebody died. I'm, I'm going to go buy a new dress for funeral. They come to church because somebody died. They ain't come to church before, but I'm going to go to uh, sister so-and-so funeral and, and go buy new shoes and new clothing. Am I talking right? I don't know if Stephen know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I think Stephen is like me. He don't like funerals either. And Rastafarian said they don't do funerals. But when Bob Marley died, everybody was there. Smoking weed. Right? <laughs> Putting, trying to put some weed in his casket. Have mercy. So they try to send him off real good so he could have enough pounds. Have when he get to hell, he could what? roll up one or two joints. Oh, oh, it ain't like that in hell when Bob got there. It's not... Because when he got there, I'm sure that the devil said, you know, he don't live here. So ain't no salvation, buddy. You cry all you want to. <laughs> ain't no salvation in hell. Ain't no peace in hell. Come on, somebody. Bye, bye, bye. Ain't no love or no joy in hell. And I'm sure when somebody get there, the devil said, he don't live here. This is my domain. And you here with me for what? Eternity. That can't be good. Look at Luke chapter 9. I hope I'm ministering good. I'm trying to bless, bless the body of Christ. I'm giving y'all what God gave me. Look at Luke chapter 9 verse 57 through 62. If you have your Bibles. When you have it, say amen. 9 to 7? Yeah. Okay. Yes. And it came to pass that as they went in a way a certain man said unto him Lord I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest sound like me and you right amen and Jesus said unto him foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests but the son of man had nowhere to lay his head I don't know if any preacher today that have nowhere to lay their head because they got more some of them got two three homes and got enough you know, places to fly back and forth to different airplanes or jets or whatever. Amen. Can I tell the truth? Because whether you have or you have not, you're supposed to preach the gospel. Amen. You don't wait till when, oh, oh, oh Lord, I'm praying for an air, uh, uh, air, uh, a jetliner, for somebody to bless me with a jetliner, then I'll go preach for you. If you got to preach on your bicycle, you preach. That's right. Come on, oh, somebody. No. If you got to preach on a moped, yeah. preach. That's right. yes. I know Apostle Green being that truck, he be preaching up something on the job. Amen. My, my, my. He said, the son of man has not where to lay his head. Tell that to some of y'all modern day preachers. Well, I, I ain't going to be homeless because the Lord says, that is Jesus didn't have nowhere to live. I'm going to live somewhere. Mm. You don't know what kind of storm going to come up That's in your life. You I'd rather be homeless than dead my God. in my sin. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Mm. 
Verse 59, and he said unto another, follow me. Come like church folks. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go bury my father. And Jesus has been calling people when they say, well, you know, let me do this. Let me do that. Let me, you know, go handle some things and then I'll come back and follow you. Amen. Religious folks. And Jesus said unto him, let the what? Let the what? Bury their dead. Amen. Let the dead bury their dead. And I'm not into the funeral stuff. After I buried my child, and then I buried my mom, my mama's funeral. I didn't want to do no more funerals. Hey, black folks just love running to funerals. And you go there and pick up spirits. Do you know how many spirits is at the graveyard and at the funeral home? Mama. And they have a good old time at the funeral too. Oh, I want. I, I, that's the best homecoming. Person done died and they said ain't no home going. They going to hell. One one preacher uh, in in and over in at the south side of Winston, some young boy died, and I heard he took a bottle of whiskey and poured it out at the graveside, doing the pour out a little liquor for the for the homie. What that say about the believer when they see us doing something crazy like that? The unbeliever. Yep. Amen. He don't live there no more. And that's what Jesus is saying to me. Tell the church to let the dead bury their dead. Mm. Amen? Amen? Dead folks, stop following dead preachers. Stop following dead folks. People that are still stuck in their past. People still stuck. Oh, 30 years ago, I used to own a church. 30 years ago, I used to. No, no, no. What are you doing now? Because we walking in now faith. You, you could have it back then, but you don't. Jim Jones, he was good in the beginning. But what did he do? There was no resurrection in life with him. The only thing he prepared was. A table of death. Mm. Come on, somebody. And Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury the dead, but go through, go thou and preach the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is nothing to do with the dead. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen? That's right. Because it took, it took COVID to wake. I mean, I don't even think COVID woke the church up because right uh, when COVID when when uh, when COVID was out, people still was still stuck on fear. Oh, I gotta wear my mask wherever I go. You know, I might just die. I mean, it, come on, you just saying I may die, or I may get sick, or I may get COVID, and you speaking words of death over your own self. Strip joints will open. Amen. You open, you can open the church though. <laughs> and that's why Jesus don't live here anymore because he can't be around the negative. Right. It's always got to be positive with him. Amen. Yeah. The Bible said he's the Alpha and the Omega. Yes, the beginning and the end. Yes. Yes. Amen. The Star of David. So in 61, he said, another also said, Lord, I will follow thee. You know, church folks like to say, well, God, I'll follow thee. But they don't follow the, the plans. If God tell you, close your church up and go to help another church or go pray with another preacher. I can't do that because, you know, I got to take care of my people. If you say, follow him, you follow whatever he tells you to do. Amen. You don't follow him and press the autopilot button and say, "Oh yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna do this part, and I'm gonna let my friend fly the airplane for a minute, and I'm gonna go to sleep." He trusted you with the keys of the church. You can't put the key in another person's hand and say, "I'm gonna put it on autopilot and go to sleep." That's not a good story, amen. So he said, and another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go and bid them 
farewell, which are at home at my house. See, all it takes is one second of distraction. It take another minute of distraction. Some people, it just take an hour. Me and Pastor were just talking about Adam could have been distracted. It is so easy to be distracted instead of being focused on the kingdom of God. Amen? So I've heard people say, well, I quit my, my $100,000 job to go and preach the gospel. But for you, you must have figured out in your mind that there's more money to make preaching the gospel. That's why you come out here and testify that I quit my $100,000 job. No, you didn't quit it. You found a different door of opportunity. Because you're not preaching for Christ. You're preaching for merchandise. It's, we, I did retail and I know about merchandising. You put the clothes in the clothing rack and you mark it up and you have the power to mark it down. So the church has become the same way like a marketplace. It's a buy and sell technique. We have a 50% markup today. Tithes and offering. We 20% God going to give you 20% for on this prophetic word and expect God to live here anymore. No, he's not living here. We in the end time. He's not here. So we are just putting them, everybody putting them, putting it on autopilot and just soaring and doing what they want to do. Yes. Carnal minded people. The Bible said to be carnal minded is to be what? Dead. Mm. It's to be spiritual to be spiritual minded is to be alive in what? In Christ Jesus. I don't want to be dead. That's why you don't live here no more. If you read the book of Revelation, which we are going right there now. Revelation chapter 3. What a word today. He doesn't live here no more. Some people are going to be shocked because they're thinking their church is so on fire. Their man of God is on fire. Their woman of God is on fire. You know, there's a prophetic word. You know, I'm a prophet. I, I You know, the thing about it, is that in the presence of another prophet, you still have to try the spirit by the spirit. Amen? If another spot, a prophet tells me, but well, the Lord tells me to tell you to go uh, to the toilet and, and, and do number two and then eat it. Is that a word from the Lord? And some people would say, well, the Lord spoke to the man of God. You better do it. <laughs> people are just telling people what they want them to do. And nobody's saying, well, that don't, he don't live in that word. He, there's nothing good about dung. Paul said, I count everything I've done as dung. Oh, what is dung? Do them. If it stink, spray it out. And that's what Jesus is going to start doing to the church. He's going to have to come through and send somebody to clean up this mess. Mm -hmm. Amen? Because mm -hmm. nobody want to clean. Nobody want to touch nothing. Oh, don't touch that. Don't touch that man of God. Don't touch that woman. Don't touch the Lord anointed. But who, the real anointed ones, nobody sees them. Nobody want to associate with them. Nobody want to even bless them. Yeah. But everyone that's evil, that's where everybody, oh, you see, that man of God, that woman of God, awesome anointing. Mm -hmm. That's all you hear about the wolves is how awesome they are. Yeah. They get all the followers. Yeah. They have they have this the, uh, a little uh, get together. Everybody come from out of town, in town, following them. But let the true servant of God come in town. The Bible said a prophet is not given honor. And I found that out yesterday. I found that real good yesterday. Because the people of this city, if they don't show me the love, I'll go somewhere else. And God will show me love. Through people, Caucasians, will show me love. Your own. Your own black folks. Your own church folks won't show you no love. Won't come to nothing you're doing, Pastor. 
They'll say, well, uh, 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 they'll make an excuse. Uh, yes, well, well, well uh, I couldn't make it because, um, yes, you know, I, I got tied up. They asked me to work. Mm, they called yeah. me to work. But if it's going to the Lord's house, is that work? Is that not putting the carriage before the horse? Revelation chapter 3. There's seven churches in the book of Revelation. I'm praying that this church is not one of them because God judged. So if you have a church, you're going to fall under the church of Thyatira. You're going to fall under the church of Peg Pergamos, Stephen, Ephesus, yeah. Yeah. Philadelphia, and Sardis, yeah. and Laodicea. But in Revelation chapter 3, look what the Lord said to this church. And unto the angel of the church of Sardis. Okay. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I, I know I'm going to clear something up that I've heard in the in the church for too long. That I've heard a lot of preachers say this. And, 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 and this was not a man he was talking to. Because now... Men are not angels. So I heard preachers say this over and over again well, to the angel of this house. I'm not an angel. The Bible said in the book of Hebrews that I'm made a little lower than, a, lower than an angel. <laughs> Come on. So I call the, uh, to the angel of this house we honor. No, don't, don't put me on a pedal stool. And have me in the fragment of an angel. Angel of spirit. I'm not spirit. I'm flesh. Amen. And he said, unto the angel of the church in Sardis, write these things. So, you know, people don't have the revelation that angel write things down for God. They write down the day you was born in the book and the day that you're going to die. You know, God knows your day of death. And God already got it written down. The angels take note to everything that we do on earth. <laughs> do y'all believe me? Angels take note of everything that we do. So when you stand before him, you can't say, well, Lord, on the, you know, I, I did this and I did that. And he's going to say, well, according to the book, I don't see that. <laughs> <So> <laughs> and then he can make it better because God is God. He can open up a big screen bigger than any uh, any uh, Vizio or any Samsung TV yeah. and show you your whole life. Yeah. Oh, you really want to see a big screen? God could make a big screen TV that no man on earth could make. Show you a whole movie clip. <laughs> Unto the angel of the church in Sardis write these things, said he that had the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. He said, I know thy works. I want y'all to listen to it. That thou hast a name that thou livest in our head. So what Jesus is saying that we have this name. No preachers are putting up church. Noel Miller Ministries. Uh, Michelle Davis Ministry. You have a name. You put that name up. Come on. And folks will say, where, where you go to church at? Oh, I'm at Noel Miller Ministry. I, I don't want no ministry. Yeah. It's God's church. Yes, it Amen? Mm -hmm. So my name is not even worthy to be. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And Jesus said it. That his, he said, I'm not worthy Mama. to be equal with the Father. Come on. Yes, yes. Jesus said it. Yes, he did. So why am I going to be equal to him? Because of apostleship? Am I higher than him? Am I equal to Jesus? Am I equal to God? No, Jesus said it's robbery. He said, I find it robbery to be equal to God. So why would I try even to make myself be equal to God? If Jesus himself said, I find it robbery. He said, why call me good master? Come on, somebody. He said, only one is good is the Father. But preachers don't always say, well, my, my man of God, he, he does good. No, no, no. Don't call me good. Because there is nothing good in the flesh. 
get me mad and I may pick up that Ruger. I may pick up that Smith & Wesson. I may pick up that Glock and come looking for you. If the Holy Ghost leave out of this body, I'll become the old Noel Miller. And that ain't nothing good that none of these people here would want to see. And all my enemies that tried me, they don't know how many times I sat there. And I was thinking, conspiring in my mind, how to get them. But it's the Holy Ghost that living in me would take out that negative thought and speak to my heart. Because nobody know it, the heart. That's why I said earlier, Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10. The heart is deceitful. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's deceitful. You see my face. But, and because you hear a person preaching the gospel and, and prophesying. This this prophet down in Florida, he was an awesome man. His big church flowing in the gifts of the spirit. Next thing the man killed his wife. Everybody was shocked. Waited for her till she sure came out of the bank and killed her. Sure was he not flowing in his gifts of the spirit? Had laid hands on people, people uh -huh. falling out. He was speaking in tongues. Uh -huh. But one thing about the devil, he has a good timetable. Mm -hmm. And he waits for a weak moment. Yes, he does. Because you have to understand that you are weak. Yes. Flesh is weak. Even Jesus said it to his disciples when they fell asleep. He acknowledged to them, can you just stay with me for an hour? Going back to church, folks, you stay in church. Oh, I, I, it's getting a little late now. Pastor Brennan preached for an hour. I'm, I, I got to go home and get my dinner ready. They can't stay with Jesus for an hour. Mm. He said, Paul preached until that young man fell. Yeah. He don't fell asleep <laughs> and died. Yeah. He I fell know, off the know. ledge and, and died. And Paul went back and laid hands on him and revived him. At church service. Yeah. You don't have that no more. You preach for 30. Pastors just want to preach for, for 20 minutes. Guess what they're asking for? $250. Right? Well, the Lord said, bring them. Everybody bring them $250 and up. Whatever. I know you got it, Sister Michelle. You just got paid. And call your business out, too. And threaten you what to give. And the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible said, give as what you can give. God is not going to force you to give something that's going to hurt your light bill, your water bill. Those are the necessities of life. Yes, they are. But these wolves, come on somebody. Right. I wish this house You're was right. full. You're I right. wish the wolves was here. Because right. all that's left in the church is wolves and hyenas yeah. and jackals. Them some dangerous creatures right there. Jackals, wolves, and hyenas. They always hungry for meat. Come on, somebody. Yeah. And you know what Jesus said? I like what Jesus said. He said, you go tell that sly fox. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Jesus didn't play. He said, he talked about Herod. He said, you go tell that sly fox what I say. Yeah. He called Herod out. Because Herod, and you know, you have these sly foxes that have crept in unawares in the church. Chief apostle, bishops. So now you have doctor slash archbishop, doctor slash. So many titles, but you don't find no love of Christ in them. <coughs> That's what I'm talking about today. Yes. He don't live there because the the Bible says in the book of John. About love. Mm -hmm. So if I love you, I'm not gonna manipulate yes. to get you to do something and put God's name on it. Yes. Yes. I slap God on name on it yes. to say the Lord is approved of it. Yes.
That's what church, that's what these modern prophets are doing. Slapping God's name on stuff. And telling you go kill yourself. The witches and the warlocks and the psychics don't, they do the same. They got a psychic place right down the street. Yeah, they do. Yeah. I remember when they fixed it up. You could go in there and that person could tell you a good word just like any prophet. Mm. They got the gift. They could tell you who working against you. Come on, somebody. You're not going in there. They could tell you who working against you. The devil will tell you. I think my cousin gave me a joke. It was so funny. And there was a good one. He said, this lady went to this witch doctor. And the witch doctor... I think it was a man that went to the witch doctor and the witch doctor was telling him that somebody was putting stuff in his shoes at work. And the guy says to him, I don't even wear shoes. <laughs> How many times has God showing us about these prophets i'm on I'm on youtube this one prophet is telling the lady this one guy he's telling the girl yeah the lord i think he was telling a lady something about being married mm -hmm. the lord gonna bless bless this guy with a wife and the guy said i'm i'm already married and so the prophet was ignoring him he kept on saying with well, us the lord gonna give you a, a wife soon the guy keep on telling him i'm married Them kind of services the Lord don't live in. That's just mad trying to. And I've seen it too many times in the church. People, the pastors, just oh, do y'all look like a good couple. I, 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 the Lord, the Lord is telling me that y'all need to go ahead and get married. I would only charge you two hundred dollars. Mm. And then the price go up later. Amen. Mm. Know. Is it good, right? Yeah. The Book of John. I'm almost done. Book the Book of John. John chapter 15. I was a little tired, but preaching this kind of word has got me so hyper. Amen. <laughs> Are you blessed today? John chapter, 15, yeah. John chapter 15. He don't live here anymore. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Holy Ghost don't live in the church no more. Didn't live there after COVID. Because mm. folks are so afraid of COVID. COVID became a God. Wow. People come. I'm saying way after COVID. People had on three masks. I just had a church sale yesterday. I saw. And people. Well. We have social distancing. And a church. I thought the church was supposed to be a place of healing. Boy, I, we should be in there looking at COVID. Come on. I dare you to come on up in here, devil. Oh, social distancing. <laughs> no, notice the devil is so slick. Six foot apart. Because the Bible said the number of the man, six, six, six. But notice that the, the number also represents the Antichrist. But six, six, six adds up to the number of 18, which is the number of bondage. The Bible said the woman that was bound for 18 years yes, yes. and Jesus said come on yes, he yes. said daughter of Abraham mm. that was bound for 18 years mm. so the enemy wants us to be bound to disease no 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 I'm, who, if, if I'm a, if I'm gonna say whom the son set free is free indeed if I have the son in me and I'm in the sun and I'm afraid of COVID pastor then who is God He don't live here no more. My wife said, ask God, said, because he said, people are trusting more in that mass than they are in me. Yeah. And he was talking about the people of the church. And that's what the world wants, the church to weaken. The enemy was using these things to weaken the church. But it because, brought out who's real and who's not. Amen. Because some of us did not get afraid. Because, nevertheless, for, for Christ I live. Right. If bullets did not kill me in the world. And I done ran out of trap house to trap house from state to state. Come on. I had uh, a COVID in 2019. I didn't even know what it is. 
So I never claimed it. It's best not to know everything. Come on, somebody. It's best not to know everything. Sometimes we just want to go find out stuff. I don't want to find out what this disease is. No, no, no. I don't even want to know I have it. And it wasn't new. Because it's biologic. Amen. Amen. So Jesus said, look at this. Chapter 15 of the book of John, verse 4. This is awesome today. Let's start at verse 1. He said, I am the true vine, and my father is what? The husbandman. Every branch in me that bear it, not fruit. He take it away, and every branch that bear it, fruit, he purge it. That he may bring forth what? More fruit. God is into the, the business of promotion. Not taking from you. He's trying to add to you. Amen? If he take it anything, he has a reason to add more to it. Always to add. Some of y'all that are school teachers that know how to add. He said, no, ye are clean. Come on, somebody. See, the only time you're clean is when you're purged. So David said, purge me with his up. Come on, somebody. David knew he wasn't clean. So he cried out. He said, Lord, purge me with his Yes, yes. My God. The church need a purging. Yes. God have to send the Holy Spirit in to wipe out some of the people that were here. I pray that the Lord purge this place. I think they made the movie The Purge to try to prepare us. That they're going to kill some of us. People were scared in the movie. Everybody got their house and gates and locks. Trusting in what they. Trying to protect what they got. But pro, not protecting this. The heart. Protect. This body. This spirit. Man. That's inside of you. But we'll protect the outside. We like to make the outside look good. Because when you see a bunch of preachers. Walking everybody in their robes, you don't know who is clean and who ain't. Because all you're looking at that's all the anointed men of God, anointed women of God. You don't know because the heart is deceptive, according to Jeremiah 17. Am I talking good? He said, Now you are clean through the word, and the Bible even said, Not the word through the washing, through the washing of the word. So every now and then, we got it. To lay up before God and say, wash uh, 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 me. Uh, 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 that's right. Wash me. I'm filthy. Right, you don't want to hear no preacher saying they filthy. No, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I mean, no, I don't do this. Uh, I don't do that. No. You don't know what you're going to do. You don't know what this old man going to do. You have no idea. Every time I watch them homicide uh, uh, a on A and E, you know, I hear the people say, "A voice told me to kill them." My Lord. Mm -hmm. They don't know whose voice. One of them said, "The Lord told him to kill people." Oh, the Lord is a murderer, right? Wow. Remember when my baby girl died? Some people said the Lord killed my child. Then the devil came back and said, "The Lord killed my child." So you know how the enemy is already. He's a liar, right? Yeah, go. Love you, Pastor. Love you too, man. God bless yeah. you. Good word, man. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Prophet. Amen. Same same God. journey, Amen. too, with you. Amen. Yes, thank you. What's the traveling journey? Right. So he said, he said, uh, listen what he said. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So every day God is speaking unto you. Amen. Not Amen. just in the letter. Because the Bible clearly said the letter kill it. But the spirit give it what? Life. So every day you need a new word. You can't go back to the Bible every day. God will minister to you personally about you. Yes, he will. Amen. But we block these ears out and say, well, well, uh, God, you talking to me about sister so-and-so and sister so and brother so-and-so. But when it comes to us, nah. That ain't God. When God start telling you about your filthiness, uh-uh, that ain't God. That's the devil. Because I am clean. And that's what church folks like to believe. They clean when they filthy. My God. He said, abide in me. That's the only time you know that you clean when the scripture said, abide in me and I in you. 
Amen. That's right. See, when you when you move in with him, that's the best roommate you got. I know, you know, we yes, talked about that, but you know, we were talking about that recently, right? Yes. You know, people have to move in with other people because yes. rent is so high now. Yes. I don't want to be living with no bunch of people. You better know. Because you don't know what spirit folks got. In my bathroom, it's just, you know, it's just a place that is for me and my quiet time. My God. Anybody that's coming in your shower, want to take a bath, with mud on their feet, come on, somebody. He said, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. So what, even you have preachers now that saying, I don't really need all that. Holy Ghost, I, I've been saved 40 years. I don't need nothing. I don't have to uh, uh, hear from God no more. Mm. I am an anointed man of God, anointed woman of God. I don't need nothing. You need something every day. You need a word every day. And as long as you're connected to the vine, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen? When you disconnect from the vine, that branch is dying daily that's why he said he's the god of the living and not of the dead if you separated from him you dead you dead spiritually what's what happened to adam first he died spiritually then he died naturally come on mm. did you know that adam was not a little man adam was big what? did y'all know that yeah. adam was big oh, yeah. that's true. why it's you think the bible said they were giants in the earth mm -hmm. and when he sinned everything got small did you notice that everything in the earth is gotten smaller. That's true. Everything has gotten smaller. Everything is thinning out. Yeah. Before we had big old TVs. Now you see how skinny TVs yeah. have got? <laughs> everything has gotten small. Yeah. Back back in the 80s, we had a big old boombox walk around. <laughs> but I don't do that no more. You have a little Bluetooth. Yeah. Everybody wants something small. Nobody wants no big old microwave no more. No. Everybody wants something they can put in their room. And now they come in with the little mini freezers. So, that's how it is. Mm. Amen? Am I talking oh, good? Lord, yes. He said, abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. Mm -hmm. No more can ye except ye abide in me. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. You can't do nothing by yourself. You can't flow in the spirit because a couple of people lay hands on you. Amen? Amen. A couple of people are prophesying, speaking to your life. You can't trust that to make you a prophet. A prophet. You can't trust what people say because I've seen people give people directions in their life that they didn't even have the gift. No, because whether you are an evangelist, you have a greater work than the apostle does. God always look at the less because he said the least in the kingdom right. is the greatest. That's right. That's right. He never said the apostles. My God. Paul said, I am the least of the apostles. Was not Paul the greatest of the apostles? But he humbled himself like Jesus said, I humble myself even unto the cross. Yes, he did. But you find in the body of Christ that he don't live in the church no more because everybody's puffed up. Mm -hmm. Everybody got big titles, got big qualifications, mm -hmm. got big names. Mm -hmm. I remember the prophet told me, he said, no, well, I see you na your name in the lights. Years ago, about 20 years ago, I see your name in the lights. That, that time going to come when he said, people are going to follow you from everywhere. And I, and I look at my life and say, nobody want to follow me. Nobody want to follow me. I cannot keep a crowd. But that's a true prophet. Because I, God showed me that the day going to come, I stood up and I saw thousands of people standing in front of me. Because Satan wants to discourage me from believing of my destiny. And you have to believe God what God shows you. Yes. Amen? Amen? Not what man shows you. What God show you, that's what you could stand on. Are you blessed today? Finally, yes. Colossians chapter 3. Hope you're being blessed. Those that are on Facebook, I love you. And I thank you for watching. Um, 
I don't know what caused that today. Cause like he just probably got stuck on dinner. <laughs> you know, Cause could cook too. Can't wait for my prayers that he comes back and Amen. help yeah. with the ministry. Yeah. That's yeah. my prayer because I definitely, you know, need a male armor bearer Amen. to Amen. help me in this. Amen. Amen. So Colossians chapter three, the enemy's fighting him to two for nail, but God will get victorious. We have seen miracles uh, this week, so I thank God. God has shown up mighty and strong. Uh, Colossians chapter three, verse one. Look what it says: If ye be, if ye then be risen with whom? Christ. Let me read it again. If ye be then risen with Christ, seek those things which are what. Above. So what God is saying, if we have rose, if we have, we need to start to seek heaven. Amen. Yes. Stop seeking material things. Stop seeking material. Uh, seeking all this. Uh, I, I want to go to the next level. I want to go to the next devil. Uh, 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 all the stuff that we want to do to show that I'm greater than the next man of God or the next woman of God. Yes. I'm more anointed. Yes. I got yes. more. I, I have a Come my relationship now. with God is closer Come than on. yours. Come on. My Lord. Come on. Mm. That's what became that James and John spirit. You know, when we get to heaven, who well, well I'm gonna seek God. Mm. You can't even tell apostles and pastors and bishops, you know, what special seat when Christ come in, where are we gonna put him? Mm. Right, right. My where are we gonna Lord. put him? Because nobody gonna know he's Christ. So where are we going to put him when he come in? Because you got the bishops up here. You got the apostles up here. And the high titles. So we don't recognize Jesus. Because he don't have on his little robe. And we don't, he don't have on his pointed shoes. Steve Harvey uh, clothing. He come in here all bummy and dirty. And stink. Oh, uh, take, take that brother right there. And I'll take him to the back. Can't come in here like that. And that's why he don't live here anymore. Because we are so much caught up on the garment. That's right. And nobody's rendering their heart. Can I get an amen? amen? The Bible says, render your heart and not your garment. I'm almost done. We're in Colossians chapter 3. So it says, Paul said, For ye be for ye then be risen with Christ. Seek those things which are above. Where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Uh, yes. Amen? Amen. So that's why the temptation. The Bible said. There's no temptation that is not uncommon unto man. And with the temptation God give us what? A way of escape. Yes. In the book of Luke we find that. Jesus mind was on heaven. His mind was on you and I. Amen? Amen. His mind and affection was on heavenly things. Mm -hmm. So when Satan came in Luke chapter 4 and and, and, and and showed him all the glory. Come on somebody. All the fame. All these things. He said I will give you preacher man, preacher woman if you bow down and worship me. Mm. Notice it was three things that he offered him. One for the father. One for the Son and one for the Holy Ghost. Mm. Come on. There was three temptations. Mm -hmm. And it all goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Look how the devil works. Antichrist. The beast and the false prophet are the number of three. Mm. The enemy tried to work the works of the spirit, but he can't. Mm. Amen? Amen? He'll fool who he can't fool. But Jesus' mind was on heavenly things and not on what? Earthly first things. Thing. The Bible says, seek ye first things that are above. Mm. Amen? Amen? The church no more doesn't want to seek things that are above. They want to seek mm. things here on earth. And hopefully that we're going to go in the stars with all these material things. is not so. Everybody said not so. Not so. He said, where Christ sitted on the right hand of God. Is the Bible says, set your affection on things what? Above. Uh -huh. Verse 2. Not on things on the earth. Yes. The Bible declared the earth is the Lord and the fullness yes. thereof. Yes, 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 yes. 
Amen. Everything that's in the earth, God has given to man. Mm. Amen. Amen. If I die and I do not achieve what you achieve, I still achieve life. Amen. Amen. Because God said, I want to give you life more and with more what? Abundant. Mm -hmm. But I want to live and you need to live. But when you start to set your affection on material things, that's when you're dead. And you don't live there anymore. Amen. Uh, you want him to live in you? You want to abide in him? Set your affections and hopes on his bidding, on his doing, on soul saving. Amen. That's what more precious unto God is saving his soul. I'm almost done. He said, for ye are dead. Paul said in the book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 3. For ye are dead. Did I, my message today said he doesn't live here anymore. Yes. For ye are dead and your life is no. hidden in Christ. Come on, somebody. Yes. I'm dead to the world. You know, the material things, to it, you got to die. Yes. To the, all the fancy stuff. You got to die. God gonna bring it to you, but your mind got to die too. That's not. You don't wake up thinking on material things. You don't wake up thinking about things that you that would bring you headache. That's right. That's Amen. Right. Yes, yes. Because the Bible said that the rich will suffer. My God. Some people wake up and start thinking, "I'm gonna play the lottery." And I'm a win. But that's the worst thing that they ever got. Mm. Because they're not good with money. My Lord. Amen. Some people are just not good when it comes to saving. They have no value of money. Mm. They just want it. And the devil will give you exactly what you want. God said I will provide all your needs. Amen. Uh, you want it, but do you really need it? Come on, somebody. Yeah. You want the gift, mm -hmm. but can I trust you with it? You want this church, but can I trust you with the keys? You want the fancy clothes, but you want it just to show off to somebody. You want the Bentley, but you don't understand that a Bentley... The oil change in a Bentley is not like an Acura. Come on, somebody. It's not like a Mercedes. You want a husband, but you don't abuse the last couple that you don't got. You want a wife, but you never pray and ask God how to be a loving man to a wife. And when you find out that he don't live there, anymore then you get ready for hell mm. you get ready for heartaches no, no, no. church folks you get ready for headaches you get ready for torment i'd rather live with christ mm -hmm. than to live with man i'd rather live broke mm. than to live amongst the rich mm. i'd rather be dead than to live amongst the living and don't know the Father. My Lord. And with that said and done, stand on your Jesus. feet. And I praise God mm. for you today. I mm. praise God for this word. Yes. I praise God for all those that came out today. May the peace of God be with you. May the angels of God go with you. May the grace of God be sufficient for you. And let him keep you from falling in the traps of the enemy. Father, we thank you for this day. We pray for each and every person. We thank you. We love you, Lord. We give you the glory in the house of power. We praise you. We thank you for this provision, God. You have made another door of opportunity for me and Steve. And for that, we thank you, Lord God. That you always uh, come on time. You always is an on time God. And God, whatever we need, we know it's available. That's all I'm hearing in the spirit. It's available. 
in this season. Amen. 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 Available. My God. Oh, Rogers loved it.